Scientists around the world have been racing to develop a vaccine for COVID-19. But what happens if people refuse to take it? Anti-vaccine propaganda has long targeted immunization against childhood diseases like measles. But in the face of coronavirus, the campaign has mutated into something that could prove even more deadly. And there is no way, as long as I'm living, that my children are going to be injected with that. There are anti-vaccine groups that are weaving a web right now, sowing seeds of doubt, developing their plans. Scientists say any potential vaccine is still probably a year away, but the misinformation drive is already underway. Recently, there were false reports that a volunteer in a vaccine trial died, prompting her to tweet, she's still very much alive. <laughs> Anti-vaxxers are also targeting Microsoft founder Bill Gates for his vaccine advocacy and falsely claiming microchips are being inserted into vaccines. I have a problem receiving any vaccine from any entity, uh -huh. especially anybody like Bill Gates. Singer MIA tweeting, if I have to choose the vaccine or chip, I'm going to choose death. Since then, MIA has clarified her stance, tweeting in part, I'm not against vaccines. I'm against companies who care more for profit than humans. And number one ranked tennis player Novak Djokovic saying on Facebook, personally, I'm opposed to vaccination and I wouldn't want to be forced by someone to take a vaccine in order to be able to travel. Scientists say our best shot at defeating COVID-19 will be mass vaccination to create herd immunity. That's when enough people in a population are immune to a disease to sharply slow transmission, protecting those who aren't immune from infection. But can we still achieve that if people refuse a vaccine? I put that question to epidemiologist Beata Kampmann. We know from the coronavirus, if you do nothing, every single person who's got COVID probably infects another two or three people. That's the rough number that we're, we're working with. So the community immunity would be have to be between 60 and 70 percent to make sure that those who haven't had the vaccine are also benefiting from the, um, from the vaccination. The London-based Vaccine Confidence Project commissioned a survey in Europe last month that indicated 20 percent of people surveyed in Switzerland would reject a COVID-19 vaccine, and 18% in Austria and France. But after the damage caused by COVID-19, there are some signs that vaccine skepticism may be waning in some parts of the world. New Zealand and Australia, which are just entering winter, have seen record demand for flu shots. I do absolutely believe this is a turning tide for us. Um, people have questions, but now they know where to go. For the first time ever, everyone knows CDC. They know Anthony Fauci. They'll be persuaded by science for the first time in a long time. Researchers say the key is using this interim time to educate people, help them understand the process, how vaccines are made, and why they're safe. We can use that year to build confidence. We have an opportunity now, and that's, that's my optimism. And if education doesn't help convince the vaccine hesitant, blatant self-interest just might. And at the moment, actually, everybody is perceiving a personal risk of being having exposed to the COVID virus as well. So it's a slightly different environment compared to a situation where we might be vaccinating against diseases people are not seeing. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.